by British minesweepers, the great port of Antwerp is now open, freeing the Allied bottleneck to the Western Front. The Nazis, surprised by the furious British assault in September, fled from Antwerp before they had time to plan its destruction. 26 miles of harbor installations provide a greatly shortened supply line. General Eisenhower pays his first visit to the British sector since D-Day. Conferences with General Montgomery and members of his staff give the Supreme Commander a comprehensive picture of progress in the Netherlands. On a tour of Second Army positions wearing British battle dress and sloshing through the flooded battlefields, General Ike is well protected. The head man of the Allied Drive has plenty to worry about. The flooded Moss River, ordinarily 200 yards wide, has widened to 1,500. Royal Engineers keep supply trucks rolling. And when it isn't raining on the Western Front, wet, sticky snow and mud combine to stall the Allied advance. Cold, miserable job for the infantry, and an even tougher one trying to give the wounded proper care. War bonds and ammunition will shorten the job. In sufficient amounts, for example, they will shorten the drive on Cologne. These are signal corps and newsreel pictures of the slow but steady advance on the Rhineland. the 450-mile front, the Allies are meeting stubborn resistance as the Nazis retire into the heavily fortified zones. The going is tough for both sides. The Allies are not penetrating the Saar and the Ruhr without cost, but the Germans are suffering heavily. Supreme Headquarters reported that German casualties in November reached the staggering total of 150,000 for a three-week period. Here's that forgotten man again, or is he? Well, if de Fuhrer is still worrying, here's something for him to worry about. General Vatteroff, German defender of Strasbourg, surrendered these 5,000 Nazis when he bowed before the Allied assault. The West Wall is tough, but war bonds and stockpiles will soften it up. As the eyes of the world focus on Greece's struggle to form a government, food, the greatest pacifier of all, arrives to feed a people which has starved for almost four years. This is the first food, other than that distributed by the Red Cross, to arrive since the war began. General Scobie and Premier Papandreou, whose government the British are supporting, are in charge of food distribution to Greeks who have almost forgotten what a square meal is like. Food, the great antidote for bullets. Food, for one of the world's bravest people. 